Good morning and welcome to worship. It's a new month and a new focus on outreach. And this is also about reaching out and it may be about being outside your comfort zone. So welcome. Um, we have a great lineup of Bible readings. Um, hopefully you have a green hymnal. If you're with us um, virtually, everything you need will be on the screen. But also for those of you who are join us, joining us on Facebook and on Zoom, we invite you to get a piece of paper and a pen. Um, this sermon is going to invite you um, this morning, ah, peace and calm. That's what we're going to seek. And so there'll be a little opportunity for writing. Um, so at home, easy enough to write. And guess what? Here in person, you now have a nice big green hymnal to use to write upon. So welcome. We're so glad that um, you could join us in worship this morning. Um, if you're a guest and a visitor here in person or um, on Zoom or Facebook Live, know that you belong because we belong together and we belong to God. So welcome. And this morning, we're starting out with a special um, greeting announcement about our stewardship campaign for 2022, which will be here before we know it. So at this time, I'm I'm going to invite Mark Scherer, our chairperson, to come forward. Hi, I'm Mark Scherer, your church council representative for stewardship. I'm excited to share with you our stewardship for all seasons theme for 2022. It is walking with God, loving our neighbor. And it's an invitation to generously support the mission and ministry of Lord of the Hills Lutheran Church. We're using Micah 6, 8 as our theme verse for 2022 stewardship campaign. God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Over the next few weeks, we're going to invite you to walk alongside us as together we make commitments for giving in 2022. We will share with you how your generous gifts will be used to love our neighbors, both here at Lord of the Hills and in our community. We look forward to 2022 as we focus on walking with God and loving our neighbor. Thank you. You'll get to hear from some special guests in the next couple weeks also. In this new month, we're beginning our worship with a remembrance of baptism. So I invite you to go ahead and stand, please, and you will find us in your bulletin that you picked up or you'll be seeing it on screen. This is a Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to the Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning, you created us in your image and placed us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you washed us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font here in our sanctuary and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy all who thirst and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our living water in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. In this new month, we are going to be singing some new music. So I'll continue with the greeting, and then we are going to sing a Kyrie, and we'll sing it through twice. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So we'll sing through this new Kyrie twice. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another and all of creation. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. So today we're celebrating the Feast of St. Francis. So our readings um, reflect that love for God the Creator and creation and love of animals and all the gifts that God's given us. So I invite you to listen for a reading from Genesis. Listen for the word of the Lord. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarmed and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So for our children's um, message, even as we have no children here present with us, maybe we have some children with us virtually, I just want you to take a moment, and this is the first thing you're gonna write down on your paper. So if you're at home or you're here with us, what brings you comfort? Okay, so I want you to write down something. So that begins with, it can begin with whatever letter you want, but we're gonna look at comfort. And I'm going to just tell you, as you think about what brings you comfort, a little bit about St. Francis. So St. Francis um, grew up a long, long time ago in the 12th century. And at that time, there were lots of wars going on. And even though he fought in a war and was involved in that, he didn't think that was very good for him. And so when he came back from fighting, he found that he got a lot of comfort in nature with animals and creatures and all of God's creation. We'll figure out something that brings you comfort. Okay, so maybe if you're a child or if you've had children, you know, sometimes it's that favorite stuff. To Maybe it's petting the dog. Maybe it's going to a quiet place. So you're going to write down something that brings you comfort. And we're going to hear more about St. Francis and about comfort, but also about peace. 
So I invite you to now put your hands out and fold them together and we'll repeat after me as we pray in the manner of our children's message. Dear God, help us be comforted by your love, by your presence and all of creation. We ask all this in Jesus name, amen. I invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of our Holy Gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So with your paper and pen um, handy at home or here, I invited you to write down what gives you, what makes you feel calm but I want to nuance on that about how and where do you experience and find peace? Okay, so just take a moment to maybe jot down a note. Sherry, who um, recently um, has moved on from working here um, and has served here so graciously for so many years, you know, shared with us a lot about the power of being out in creation. And for some people, that's where they find their peace, by a river, in the mountains, outdoors, maybe putting your feet in the grass. Peace and calm may seem pretty similar. They're nuanced though, because what I want to invite and encourage you to consider on this day, as we explore a little bit about St. Francis, about the gospel we heard from Jesus, about God who has created us, how to cultivate peace despite whatever might be going on around you. There were a lot of expectations on Francis. Francis of Assisi was born into a wealthy family. It was expected that he would be a lawyer, that he would be a person of prestige. He had inheritance, he had privilege, he had prosperity. But his heart was designed for something else. The beginning of his life held a lot of a conflict. Not only the conflict when he was sent to war and realized that was nothing he could do, but also to forsake the expectations of himself by his family. So he walked away from all those things. There's a number of great stories about St. Francis. There are movies made about St. Francis that somehow this gift that he was given, this clarity gave him the willingness to truly just let everything go. And there's the famous story of St. Francis just completely taking off everything, um, all clothes and just leaving, going out into nature, trusting God in that way. Now everyone's not gonna be a Francis of Assisi, but his story and his life and his legacy invite us to listen deeply for our callings, how has God called you with the gifts that you have at whatever stage and age you are in life? Part of the peace and the calm that come to us is when we take that time to hear clearly God calling to us. 
So in our stewardship Bible verse from Micah 6, 8, that expression of walking humbly can also be translated as walking intentionally. Francis intentionally left behind things that he did not hear God calling him to do. He's the founder of the Franciscan order of Catholic priests. Some of you, as myself, follow the work of uh, Richard Rohr, who's a Franciscan, who take vows of simplicity, vows of poverty, vows of getting clear about their calling in life. And this may change over the course of our lifetimes as well. Some of the well-known stories about St. Francis talk about his ability to preach the gospel. And one of his fa famous sayings is, preach the gospel at all times, and when absolutely necessary, use words. He saw that his actions, the way that he showed up in the world, was part of how he was preaching the gospel. We get to be invited into that as well. But part of what helps us get clear about that is when we hear readings like that from the 11th chapter of Matthew. Part of the clarity comes when we listen for directions from God. So I want you to take a moment also to write on your paper, where do you find things to be easy? Just write down some things that are really easy. Maybe it's just watching TV. You can write that down. Maybe that's easy for some of you. Not for me. I can't sit down and watch TV. Maybe it's cooking. Maybe it's gardening. Some things that are simple and easy for you. Francis found his deep joy and used it to meet the deep needs of a world that was in a lot of conflict. He lived during the time of the Crusades and his desire was not to kill people who thought differently than him, but to be in conversation with him, them. Let's just say that didn't go over well and didn't really happen. Because just then, many centuries ago, as now, conflict, chaos, violence, distress, they were all there as well. And Francis stepped outside those expectations and listened clearly for how God was calling him. Later this afternoon at five o'clock, we'll be meeting outside um, to do a blessing of animals. Sometimes those are what give us comfort. Walking the dog. For me, sometimes it's just sitting with my dogs, petting the cat, listening outside to the birds sing. There are so many ways to find calm. But my invitation to you this morning is to be people also of peace. So the way that we can share peace is by letting it inside of us. So here again, these words from the second part of our, the 11th chapter of Matthew. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. With animals, when a yoke is placed on their backs to animals, it's to carry a heavy burden. Jesus invites us to both let Jesus take that burden and also accompany and walk with one another as we share our burdens. Today, we'll have another meeting of our grief group. It's an opportunity for people to share their heartache and their heartbreak. And it is a powerful way to allow for healing. Peace and calm. I invite you all week long to consider your calling, 
your purpose. God's speaking to you in all sorts of ways. It can happen maybe like it did for Francis in the beauty of God's creation. But it can also happen for us in our own reading of scripture. This verse, Matthew eleven twenty eight, became a touchstone for me when I read it in the message translation. Part of that was written as, learn to live by the unforced rhythms of grace. To allow God to be our peace, our source of calm, and to listen for when we are called to preach the gospel. It may be words, but it might also be that showing up, that being of service, that being a loving, caring presence in the world. God has a purpose for each one of us. God has a calling for each one of us. As we focus on reaching out and outreach, the clearer each of us becomes on the particular gifts that we have to share, the insight, the wisdom, the skills, the talents that may come quite simply and easy to us. Then we get to generously share what we have generously received. Last month when we focused on we talked about God's work with our hands. As we reach out and practice outreach, I want you to consider the blessings you have and how you can use them to be a blessing to others. How you can allow for that peace and that calm though. There may be times where there will be challenges. Something will trouble you. It will make you anxious and afraid for sure. This is part of the human journey. But when we go back, maybe you take that paper home and you expand on what provides for you the peace and the calm. Because the spiritual journey is about finding that in the midst of the chaos and the, the loudness of the world. Enter into scripture and song. We're going to be singing some new songs as well as some old ones. Music can be one of those places that maybe we find our peace or we find our calm. I've noticed even that even with my own little dogs, sometimes they can pick up on my anxiety. If some of you have pets, you know, pets just pick right up on our anxiety. But I've also noticed that when the dogs are anxious, did you know on YouTube, there's dog music to keep your dogs calm? Who knew? And you know what? It kind of works. Maybe it's just it calms me down and I put on the YouTube dog calming music. I'm not quite sure. But we have an amazing God who has created us and given to us the beauty of this creation. Some of the new liturgy that we're singing comes out of a hymnal called All Creation Sings. So I invite you all month long, not just in this week, but especially in this week, to listen for calm and peace, to consider where you find your comfort. Listen for your purpose and your calling, because God only knows what God might use to bring that about for us. For as Jesus says, he is gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Amen. Our hymn of the day is found in your green hymnal. It's Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus, number 487. I invite you to stand as we sing.
Our worship continues with our profession of faith using the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it printed in your bulletin. We profess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. Each petition will end with, hear us, O God, and your response is, your mercy is great. Let us pray. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You have established a diverse and beautiful creation revive declining species and preserve endangered lands. Cultivate in us a sense of wonder for the world you created. Thank you for the inspiration of St. Francis, love for creatures and desire to care for creation. Hear us, O God. You desire for us not to be alone and to live in community with one another. Strengthen relationships between nations and people that we celebrate and support one human family. We lift up all those who are living in lands of conflict. We remember those who seek shelter and safety. Those who are working to protect others. 
We trust you to share in our experiences and struggles and guide us where you would have us go. Hear us, O oh God. <clears throat> Bless all who live with any mental or physical disability. Inspire creative communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable. Bring healing to all who are sick through skillful hands and compassionate hearts. This morning, we especially pray for Fran Siddig and Bryce Blake, Linda Arwood, for Connie, Dave Werner, Ruth Mattingly, Katie, Mike Crumley, Robert Hallinan, Richard Ziegler, Carol, Micah and Cheryl Shellhouse, Greg Nelson, Chuck Grote, Tony Hayes Jr., Andrew Ike, Andy Martinez, Jan Nupp, Sarah McCombs and Linda Krabenhoft, Joe Rogers, Judy Dionese and Carol Groves, Barry Alman and Mary Stegmuller, Jamie and Byron Pfluger, Heather Harrington, Michael Bax and Teresa Quick and their families, Michelle Patterson, Michael Patterson, Joshua Hallenbeck at the death of his wife, Tina, and those we now name or hold in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. We now offer up those prayers for those things known and unknown, the particular concerns that lie deep within our hearts, the places where we need to find your peace and your calm. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those that are known only to you. We pray all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. If you're here with us um, virtually, you can put a peace note in the chat. And we're so glad you're here. And then you can go ahead and be seated. <clears throat> peace, compassion, being that in the world, they are powerful and God needs us. So go ahead and be seated um, for a moment. Um, we're so grateful for your generosity that makes ministry um, possible. And you'll hear some more announcements as we get towards the end of worship about how to be connected and involved here in worship. Um, our offertory plate is at the back, so you can just um, put your offering in there and you can always do electronic offering as well. Please join me as I pray. Gracious God. You bless us with gifts of guidance, new life, growth in grace, and fruitful labor. Accept the first fruits of time and toil, field and orchard we offer here. Bless and multiply these gifts to our nurture and the care of your creation for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we are going to try a new hymn. So I invite you to stand for the singing of the new hymn. It's found in your bulletin. Some of you know this from long ago. I think Thomas is just a slightly different tune, maybe. Is that what it was? So this is the welcome table. So we're going to just go ahead and sing through three verses. This um, comes out of the, the new hymnal, the um, care, All Creation Sings. So this is kind of our pre-communion hymn. So I invite you to sing along. And probably by the time we get to the third chapter or the third verse, We'll have that tuned out.
power of a meal, a meal to give purpose, a meal to heal, a meal to invite us to be part of the whole community. So it was on the very night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he taught his friends and his followers a prayer. We pray now together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And if you're having communion in your seat or you're at home, hear these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. And if you're coming forward, we invite you to just stand around the altar at a space that seems um, comfortable for you. The inside of the, um, the tray has grape juice and the outside is wine. This is the Lord's table and he bids you come taste and see the goodness. <laughs> Please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Living God, as the disciples ate and drank with their risen Lord, we have been nourished with the very presence of Christ. Through this meal, may we be strengthened 
to keep your word and to proclaim the power of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. As I mentioned earlier tonight at five o'clock, if you have an animal or a pet um, or a friend of any kind you'd like to bring or come by yourself, we're gonna have a outdoor blessing um, of the animals service. Um, we invite you to bring a chair. We'll bring out some folding chairs too. Um, it's a fun time to really um, let in that joy of all God's critters and creation. So if you've never been to a blessing of the animals service, I invite you to come and um, check it out. Um, it'll last about probably 40 minutes and it's outdoors. So hopefully it's a great afternoon um, for that. Also starting next Sunday at five o'clock on our second Sundays of the month, we're gonna have a Sunday evening worship service. So, um, the second Sundays of the next three or four months, um, we'll have an, a, an additional worship service opportunity that'll only take place here in person. It won't be remote or anything like that. Check out the ways um, that you can be connected and involved in reaching out and outreach. Um, we'll have a special guest with us from Holy Kicks. Um, next Sunday, Pastor Tig um, Taylor will be with us also. Holy Kicks will be one of the recipients of our generosity in 2022. And I'm excited for you to hear about his mission and his ministry as he walks alongside people who find themselves without shelter and who are in great need of ministry. So he's a great partner for us in ministry. Um, I'm excited for you to check that out. Also, um, music, handbells, choir, it's starting. So be sure to reach out to Thomas if he has not already reached out to you. We're gonna keep making a joyful noise in all the ways um, that we can. You'll find other announcements on our website. We try to keep that pretty current and there are so many ways that together we get to love, serve and grow. So talk to each other, talk to me. Um, let's be those people who continue to reach out with all parts of our lives. Um, Cause you know what the amazing thing is you can often find peace and calm by being of service to other people. It also puts our own lives often in perspective. I invite you to now stand and receive these words of benediction. The Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Sing Him is another one we're going to be singing all month long, and it's found in your bulletin on the back um, side. May the God of hope go with us. God of hope go with us every day to a world in need with news of joy and peace. May the God of justice lead us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's true. When we hear Christ call. Let me try that one more time, Lisa. Oh, I love that sound, but I couldn't follow along. Let's try it again. <laughs> May the God of hope go with us every day to a world in need with news of joy and peace. May the God of justice feed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new. Faithful, when we hear Christ call. Thank you. We're going to keep singing together, praying together, and loving and serving together. So, so let us go in peace to love, serve, and grow. Praise be to God.